Good morning. Happy Wednesday. <clears throat> um, so what's new? We're back around to Wednesday and um <clears throat> wait and see if anybody is on here. Good morning, Ellen. How are you? I apologize, I have a little bit of a cold this week. Hi. So, but I'm Allie. Hi, Allie. Hi, Amy. Welcome. Hi, Michael. You, Iwa? Iwa? Did I say that right? Hi, Kim. Hi, Deb. Marlon. Um, Rosemary. So, I couldn't decide what to paint. I never can. And this morning, I was just going through some old photos and found something I had never painted a little bit different. I keep trying to challenge myself a little bit. I'm trying to get those big chunky strokes and sometimes I do and sometimes I don't and I've been working on this is a little bit bigger I think this is like I don't know what this is 20 by I have no idea what size that is but that's when I was working on that yesterday having so much fun with it but it's hard to get the same feel in a large painting as I do in the small ones but I'll keep learning and trying it so let's see I'll show you what I'm thinking of doing it is um, looks a little dark in here. Let me move this. Um, it's a box of, I guess there's, I can't even think of what they're called. <clears throat> Thanks, Michael. Yeah, I'm hoping I'm at the far end of it now of this crazy cold. I did test for COVID. It said I was negative, so hopefully I'm good. But I'm so far into it now that it should be finished soon. Um, so part of what I love about this, I had taken this photo a long time ago and never painted it. Um, it might be a little challenging. It might be a little quiet, big brushes on. Yeah, I wish I can't find great big brushes that are the same as the small ones that I like. I have this, this is a big one, but it, it just doesn't feel the same. It, it's, um, this, it's almost like the spring in the just the way the brush behaves is different. Um, but I should try that again. I do have some really big ones. Like I got this, look at this. How fun is that? But the bristles almost feel too soft. Like I think it's going to, but why not? I have to try it. You know how much paint though it takes to fill up a brush like that? It's just crazy. Two, oh, thanks Caroline. Well, that's good to know. I'm at about two weeks. So maybe I'll soon be finished. So what I have to keep in mind with painting this is most of this composition is all cool colors. Look how that vibrant blue is glowing there. I don't know if I can capture that or not. That's a goal. And there's only little bits of where the sunlight hits where there's warmth. You really see the warmth in the oranges. Um, maybe a little bit right here in the box that it's in and um, in where the light's hitting in the background through the little so I love I love the strength of that and I wanted to paint something in cool colors that's I just woke up thinking about cool colors today <laughs> I don't know what so we'll see what happens <clears throat> and I want to try really to keep um keep keep it simple I'm gonna try to keep it simple good morning Emerson how are you I'll block in where these really um, warm colors are. Um, sorry, I'm thinking here. And this, and I guess I could put, I have that too close right here. Now I have to make sure I don't bump my, my phone because somehow, good morning, Alan. Hi, Dewan. Um, remember it got like really weird the last time it's almost like it uh, got enlarged so I have to be careful not to let that happen <clears throat> so kind of all the warm areas of the whole thing so the colors just mixing the colors are out of my comfort zone so it may take me a little bit longer to or more thought to do this painting because I'm not, I'm much better at like reds and pinks because that's my comfort zone and um, 
the um, the other colors I don't use very often. So I have to think a little bit harder on them. Jane says, good morning. It's beautiful cold morning in Ottawa. So these look lovely and fresh. Good morning, Meryl. Yeah, cold. I'm sure it's cold there. Holy cow. We're going to have a not bad day here today. I hear that it is going to be... Um, get a, a, a transparent red here on my palette. It's going to be like 40 degrees or something. It sounds wonderful. <clears throat> I'm going to mark where, where my um, Good morning, Barb. So how is everyone today? I got up a little early. I didn't finish my um, my coffee yet. Thank goodness. Get a little pink in there. I need a little pink. And I've been trying really hard to paint paint what I see, but not get too precious with it, so that I, I it can be a little spontaneous too. <clears throat> Um, yeah, yes, I have a cold. I don't know how that happened. Now I need a little bit of warm, um, where do I want warm? I think I'm gonna, I'm trying to think, I'm learning a lot more about browns now. Never been, um, terribly good with browns. Oh, I'm gonna put, I'll just have to cool it down later. <clears throat> I'm gonna put out some, tran this transparent brown oxide on my palette. Trying to embrace neutral colors and browns and things that I don't use very often. I've got to get um, where the darker areas of my oranges are. That's what I need to be eating. Isn't that funny? Because <laughs> I have a cold, I should be eating oranges instead of painting them. <clears throat> Right now I'm thinking, this is complicated. What was I thinking doing this this morning? But something about it spoke to me, so. So what's new with everyone? Anything new or fun happening? Anyone have any new projects they're working on? I, um, I sold a few paintings at the... Um, Notre Dame um, demure uh, show, so I have to go drop them off today. I think, Meryl, you already dropped yours off, didn't you? Um, so that'll be fun to do that. And I'm getting ready for some shows. So I feel like I have a lot going on. I have to decide if I'm going to do Art in Bloom again to my online course. I think I will do it again here in the spring, but I have to pick dates for that and get that moving. Lots to think about. I kind of feel like I pretended like I didn't have to start the year in January, and now I feel behind. But I did need to rest, I guess. A two-day Zoom workshop with Sheila Davis. Day two today. Oh, how fun. That sounds wonderful. I love workshops like that. In person, or is it a Zoom? Okay, you said Zoom. That's fun. I should make one of those. That would be fun to do. Welcome, everybody who's just stopping in. Oh, I think this might be a little too opaque. I need more of a transparent um, green color. I just got a new tabletop easel from Etsy to sh shop to use just for painting and oils. Oh, that's wonderful, Carolyn. A tabletop easel, like what I'm working on, something like this. That's great. That's really nice. Yeah, I actually have a second one of these somewhere, but I wouldn't have anywhere to even put it right now. 
My studio is full. <clears throat> Oops. It is very different painting on, like I was painting on canvas yesterday, and now I'm painting on um, the ampersand gesso panel. It just feels very different. It's always funny going back and forth how, um, how it feels. Uh, I think I'll do that. Um, leaf toward the end. So I'm just blocking in so I kind of know where I want things to belong. Visually go. You're going to have to wish me luck with this color mixing because they certainly are different colors for me. But it's always good to challenge yourself. If you're working on something and it gets too easy or too comfortable, that means it's time to try something new. And then, you know, for a while, it, it might work in the beginning. It might not work. You just keep trying. And then usually something clicks and then it adds kind of to your arsenal of, of what you like to do or what you can do. Um, do I have blocked out my darks now? I'm not sure. Wipe, wipe a little bit of this. <clears throat> Missing. It works really well on Zoom, almost like being together. Oh, that's good. Yeah, when I do my inspiring art, we do that, and I love being together like that, even if we can't be together and make watercolor Valentine cards. Oh, that's fun. I love Valentine's. I painted in a year. That's not easy. Holy cow. Laura said, good morning. Yes, I think the universe was sending you a message with these oranges in your cold. I think it was. I've got to go find oranges to eat maybe. Just dropped off 11 paintings to a store, design store. Exhausted. Well, that's wonderful. Ellen, this panel is um, six by eight. And Sorry, I missed all these comments. Oh, size up canvas. Sorry, sorry. Oh, the one behind me or the one that I'm working on? Or do you mean the one that's behind me? I can't remember. I think my dark darks are good. Put a little bit more. Both. Oh, let me. Do you want to know what that one is, Ellen? I can tell you what size it is. I really like this. this. Is I think a new size for me. Trying to get a little more consistent in the sizes that I paint. It is eighteen by twenty-four. I have my tape measure right here because I was measuring this morning for a new, um, like tabaret thing, for underneath my desk. <laughs> so I knew right where that was. A lot of reflective light in here too. Oh, you're welcome. <clears throat> Put a little bit of orange in too, and then I'll do my pigment sticks. <clears throat> it's crazy looking, isn't it? <laughs> Very different for me. Oops. <clears throat> That's messy. And when you just so paper, how many layers do you do? Ellen, I usually put three layers on. I find that um, sometimes less than that, it gets a little uh, too absorbent, I would say, is the problem if you don't put enough gesso on it. It probably all depends on your gesso and how heavy-handed you are when you put it on and things like that. But I do. I do. And I enjoy that part of it. I have no idea why, but I love gessoing panels. It's such a great mindless thing to do like mowing the yard. It's calming to me. 
All right, I think that's a good start. I'm gonna do a couple of pigment sticks. This one's really messy. I gotta clean that off. Too impatient, yeah. I think I have that same problem, Ellen. I probably would be too if I didn't enjoy it so much. Clean that um, that hard outer layer off of there. I think that's actually the paper. It is. Okay. That's much better. Whoops. Yeah. I got my brush all dirty. Blending, wiping out. We, now what am I doing? Is that what you're asking me? I guess I'm, I don't know, not intentionally doing any of those things. I think I just do, um, now I'm just adding like little bits of color with my pigment stick. This keeps me a little loose, a little less precious, I guess. out a new my um I love this color this Provence blue was completely used up I had to throw my away my little piece I was getting too messy with it do you gesso in straight lines do you gesso in straight lines or free flow brushwork do you mean when I'm doing when I'm painting on my paper when I'm putting gesso on my paper Ellen is that what you're asking I draw the line on the paper. If you're asking about my paper, I draw the lines and then um, just paint inside the lines, but then I tape them off later. I guess that's enough. I just need a little hint of, of this today. Thanks for all the waves. Or am I waving to you? I don't know. I have little wave signs there. Yes, gesso on paper. Some people go horizontal on... Oh, oh, I never thought that much about it, Ellen. I don't know. I don't... I never thought about it. I probably just go whatever way feels fun. <laughs> I don't know. Always kind of use the same colors for this. That's good. And I didn't use any of this lightest. I love to go with the flow every which way. Yeah, that's probably exactly what I do, Ellen. Even though I'm pretty go with the flow. good start what do you think oh uh carolyn they're um rnf pigment sticks i love them they're very um kind of creamy and fluid that's what they're called and i just use them a little bit in this stage of the painting i'm going to clean off my palette <clears throat> i did mix a couple colors already because i was ready early this morning so i started mixing colors because i was worried that um my painting would take too long with me not knowing what colors I'm trying to mix. R and F are the best, I agree. Yes, they're nice looking and rich. Okay, let me move my coffee. So I need to think of my oranges. I mixed a color for down here. Let me see if it works. Let's just do that right now before I start to see if, oops, I obviously need more of it. I don't know, it's gonna be hard to get that glow. 
Like, I don't know if I need to let some of my paper show through or if it's more about what colors are next to it. Because it does, yeah, I can't even tell. I can't really assess if it's gonna look like it's glowing. Uh, yeah, you could use pigment sticks over acrylics, but then you can't put acrylics back over top of that because acrylics dry. And if you put acrylic back over a pigment stick, then the pigment stick would never dry. So you can go oil over acrylic, but not acrylic over oil. <clears throat> and you can't mix the two, but you could do that. Okay, so I need, this was the color. I'm going to make more of that. Maybe a little bit. Some of the colors that I don't use as often get thick sometimes, so I add a little bit of the, um, this um, <clears throat> liquid in it keep them a little more fluid. Doesn't happen very often, but paints that I've, some of my paints, you know, oil paints really don't go bad or hardly ever. So I might have some paints laying around here for years. I feel like that's gonna work, but I'm not sure. Good morning, Dot. Yes, the sticks do take about the same amount. Some I've read somewhere that the sticks like never dry, um, but I don't know. They feel they're dry to the touch. Like when I finish a painting and and um, send it, <clears throat> they feel dry. So I don't know. I'd say they dry about the same as the oil paint. <clears throat> Of course, I don't put it on super thick either. If you put it on really, really thick, that might be an issue. I'm trying to get that really deep. <clears throat> so for some of these colors, if it turns out this is a new color that I just got, I just treated myself to a few new colors, cobalt, turquoise, greenish. So it's, it's kind of that color right there, <clears throat> really pretty. Neo color crayons by Crayon Dash work well for what, yes, they do. I do like those a lot. Warmer in Ohio, good, yes, it's warmer here too, today, I think, it's supposed to be. Um, make colors. Yep, that's nice. Need to make some different um, colors for my oranges. <clears throat> What's everybody having coffee or tea? I need to have a little of my coffee today. Pools are or the warm. And I want to try to to not um, be too. Uh, I want to try and put down intentional brush strokes. Coffee with cinnamon and cacao. Is that how you say that, Ellen? Coffee. <clears throat> um, what do I need? I need my very lightest. I'll take this and add white. I should move it back up there where it belongs. Sometimes I tend to get colors all over my palette, but I should keep color groupings together. <clears throat> Black coffee. It's probably the best choice. And then I think I'm going to use white, which is, um, I want to warm that up a tiny bit. So I'm just going to put the little bit of yellow in there. Littlest bit. Warm that white. Um, now what else do I need? Uh, I need, obviously I didn't make enough of that color. Let me...
take a little bit of that and warm it up. Maybe I'll warm it with a little bit of warm white or do you mix it in or sprinkle it on top? It does sound good. <clears throat> Did you get special cinnamon? Oh, that's good. That's a nice warm version of that color. So I talked more to that company about doing um, a class in France, and it could happen. I'm thinking of maybe maybe next July. July a year would be really fun. A oh, warm white chain. I use this. <clears throat> it is uh, Williamsburg Titan Buff. And I also have my workshop coming up in Connecticut in May, if anybody wants to join me there. It's four days. I think it's like Sunday evening until Thursday. And we're going to paint all things like spring. It'll be a really pretty time of the year. And we'll do a lot of flowers and birds and fun things like that. Okay. Let me cacao. Okay. Without sugar. Cacao. All right. I put this back up and didn't by accident enlarge it. Oh, my goodness. That looks challenging, doesn't it? That's certainly a messy middle messy beginning <laughs> messy beginning there okay <clears throat> now I want to do very intentional brush strokes uh, not oh I didn't mix any greens let me just that doesn't gonna take me much let me just put a little bit of green out here forgot about that <clears throat> I'll just play with that all right I just made a little bit of pile of green you mix it in <laughs> Thanks, Bonnie. I'm not sure. This is that messy beginning when I don't have any confidence that it's even going to turn out okay. Because I want to like put down the brush strokes, but not fuss with them. So hard for me to do that. Because I want to always blend things. I want to have the colors gently transition. But I love the look of it when they're just sitting next to each other. And they look like they're transitioning like that. You know what I mean? It's always my goal. I always want my paintings to look somewhat realistic from the distance. But to look completely just all you do is get lost in the brush strokes when you're up close. <laughs> Thanks, Ellen. You always give me that vote of confidence I need. Especially at this stage when I'm thinking, I don't know. What do I, where do I want to start? Um, I'd love for you to show us one of your kids. I felt did not come out to your liking, then tell us why. Oh, one of my pieces that I did that did not come out to your liking, and then tell us why. Yeah, that's a good idea. <clears throat> um, yeah, I can do that. Um, yeah, and sometimes, yeah, I'm thinking, how would I do that? Sometimes I'm not even sure what I don't like about it. That's the hard part. Like I might finish something and be like, uh, and then I'm like, is it, is it boring? Is it the composition? Is it that I just don't like the colors? <laughs> Not my kids. You don't want to see my kids. <laughs> well, they're fun too, but <laughs> yeah, I knew you meant my paintings. I like everything about my kids. Not almost everything. <laughs> Pretty lucky in that department. We are actually going skiing for a couple of days. My son rented a place in Vermont. <clears throat> I put a put it away and then bring it back out and then love it. That does happen sometimes too. <laughs> Hopefully, I like my kids. Yes, tour them. 
So, yeah. So I'm, and I'm not skiing. I'm really just going because my son's girlfriend's parents are going and I'd like to hang out and visit with them. And, but I can't really take painting stuff with me. So I have to think ahead of what kinds of things I can work on. Because one of the days I think I'm going to kind of be there by myself in the lodge with nothing to do. Which sounds like heaven to me. Absolute heaven. So I have to think about um, how I can be productive with that time. So whether I, I want to like redo my website. But that might be a lot to do in a, in a, a lodge, a ski lodge. Or if I want to work in my sketchbook or do some planning. It's like, I feel like I had this piece of time and this always happens to me. It's like vacation. Like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have time to myself. What 860 things can I possibly do in that short period of time? And then I'll be like, I don't know why I didn't get all that done. Yes, water. I was thinking about watercolor too, Ellen. Bring a book and a bottle of wine. Oh, I would like hanging out with you. That sounds like a good idea. Just relax with a book. Isn't that funny? It's like I that that's not even in my wheelhouse. I'm like, am I really allowed to do that? Read a book and drink a bottle of wine? <laughs> yeah, because it could be like eight hours or something. But that should definitely be a piece of it, right? A book and a wine. And ski lodges in Vermont are very different than the ones that are in Pennsylvania. So I don't know. I don't know how that all works. If you bring wine, if they serve wine. I would love a beautiful lodge where I could just um, relax by a big sunny window. Watch the skiers go by. Do a little watercolor, a little reading. I'd have to find a book though. I don't think, I just finished the book I was reading. Yeah, maybe I'll have to go to the bookstore. So that really is very flat. Lost connection. Is it okay now? Probably just thinking about relaxing will bring you some. Yes. And when I relax, that's when all the ideas come. Did you did you guys see I did the five, my, like my five. Instead of doing goals this year, I did five things to remember. Did I tell you about that? I don't know where I put it. I had one here. And that was one of them because the best ideas come when I'm quiet. <clears throat> if I'm quiet long enough, they all kind of just come spilling in. That's the best feeling. Oops, sorry, I bumped you. No, Illusions by Richard Bach. I have to write that down, Ellen. Because I guess it's still early enough. I could order a book or go to the bookstore. I did go to the bookstore the other day for something for Valentine's and it was such a treat. Illusions. I'll write that down. My little place where I write notes is so full now that I come back and I can't find where I wrote things down. So I need to get new paper here. Oh Richard Buck. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Ellen. All right, yeah, maybe I'll just keep going here with the background a little bit so that I'm it's taking me forever to pull a tissue here so that I can concentrate in here. Put the book on my iPad. I would have never thought of that. I've never done that. I've never read a book. Um, what's that called when you read a book like that? I've never done that. I don't know how I would do with that. I'm such a book, like I'm so old fashioned. Take your camera and capture the Vermont countryside and villages. Super inspiring for an artist. Oh, that's fun. And I do have my, my real phone, my real camera charged. I could take that along. Do some snowscapes. I want to do more landscape painting. Those pencil, I love those pencil erasers. I painted this. I love, this is my favorite. Dixton Ticonderoga number two with one of those erasers on top. And it's like the best. I, I, uh, I actually did a painting of that because I love that tool. Say my favorite. That's one of my favorite art tools and so are, um, I love 
um, Sharpie pens too. Quite wonderful. Kindle or Audible. All right, and those, that's a little book thing, right? It's a little, Kindle is one of those little thingies. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. I don't have one, though. But I do have an iPad. Or I could learn Procreate. That's something else I've wanted to do. That's on my bucket list of things I want to learn. But that's not relaxing. I'm, I'm blending too much here. <clears throat> it's more than I wanted to do. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. yeah, I love that pencil painting too. I still have that over on my shelf. I'm getting a little too blendy. Kindle app. Oh, okay. Okay. I see what you're saying, Ellen. I can get the app on my phone and then read it that way. Even on your phone, isn't that too little for your eyes? I think it would be for mine. I'm getting too blendy. So I'm going to go one more pass and let go of it. I like the feeling of a book in my hand. So do I. And paperback. I don't like, I don't like hardback books. I think it comes from years of beach reading. Like I don't want... And I like to be able to just pull it out and read a little bit and then put it away again, too. Or I guess you could do that with your phone. All right, I'm going to stop fussing with that. That's a little, well, I'm not going to stop yet, knowing I need a little bit. I just feel like it's not dark enough up there. All right, Kim, stop doing that. <clears throat> Let me clean the top. See, I don't, now that I'm looking in here, I don't know if my, I always have to clean that little bit that goes on the edge because when I pull this off of here and go to photograph it, I always get it all over myself. All right, because I, now I already have it all over my hands. Paperback print is too small now. Oh yeah, isn't that awful? All right, I think that's good. Stop. I'm going to stop doing that right now and go back to a little bit smaller brush <clears throat> and have a little sip of my coffee. Where's everybody tuning in from? That's it. Chunky brush strokes. I don't know if this is something that doesn't really lend itself to chunky brush strokes, but we're going to try. <clears throat> Michigan, Ohio. Kim, are you not including the little leaf on the left to break up that space? Yes, I am going to do that at the end when I do this other leaf. Sometimes I'll leave space and work around it, but I often feel like unless it's something necessary. I'm better off putting it in later. Oh, good, Kathy. I hope you love the brush as much as I do. Alley in Queens. Yeah. And don't let me forget to do that because <clears throat> I may. So I feel like there's a little bright reflective light under in the bottom of this orange. Maybe I can add that in right now. Um, this might be too bright, but And I've got to go lighter over there. <clears throat> I 
Oh, does anybody use rosemary brushes with acrylic? Um, no, but I paint so differently with acrylic. I love these brushes. These are not cheap. I have them in two different sizes, and I'm, I'm going to be able to tell. They're Winsor Newton Series 995. This, I actually have a much easier time taking care of my oil brushes than I do my acrylic brushes, but that's my absolute favorite brush to use for acrylics. I love, it kind of has the same feel of the brush that I use for oil painting. I'm not gonna do that yet. I'm getting a little premature there. <clears throat> Our rosemary brushes, you have to order them from England and they're, it's a wonderful company. They come quickly. They uh, have great customer service. Um, and that's where I buy, not this brush. This brush is Tricale. I love this too. This is a, kind of a new one to me that I really like too. Yeah, finding the art supplies you like is, is um, very important. To, you know, it has to feel good in your hand, like, like your favorite pencil or... <clears throat> Darker. And Princeton, yeah, they're good brushes too. <clears throat> I'm gonna clean my brush out pretty well because I'm gonna go into some oranges here. <clears throat> now I'm looking and it's really interesting to look into the what you're seeing because it looks very different than how it looks to me. have to be careful. <laughs> I can tell I'm holding my breath now. I get to this part where it's feels scary and I hold my brush. <clears throat> How is brush application different in oil and acrylics? That's a good question. I would say <clears throat> with um, oil paint, your paint stays wet, like for a really long time, <clears throat> but with acrylics, it dries right away. So I have trouble like even keeping my brush wet long enough to like make do to do very much. It's just such a whole different feel. Um, and yeah, I guess the brush is I don't know. I never even tried using like an oil painting brush for acrylics, but I don't know why you couldn't. I think they're just too expensive. Maybe they would get worn out too quickly. <clears throat> I've got to think here a little bit. I'm hard on brushes. Yeah, I am too. I love rosemary brushes too, but they don't last very long for me. Monarch is also good with oils. Yep, I agree with both of those things. Mine last pretty long. <coughs> and I even keep ones that are kind of frayed and, and sloppy and use them still sometimes anyway. I still don't, I'm still missing some of my darkest darks. I think it's throwing me off a little bit. I need to put a few more darks in here. <clears throat> okay. White showing. <clears throat> 
fussing with that too much. I kind of like, I think the box itself, now I see this shouldn't. <clears throat> Be too dominant there. <clears throat> yeah, the colors, that's what drew me to this. This morning was the, the color. I really wanted to paint something with cool colors. I think I usually paint with warm and drawn to paint with um, these colors. All right, I need to, I'm avoiding those oranges, getting them to look dimensional. It's time to dive in and add my lighter colors and then I can add my leaf. So it is already 846. I like to try and make sure I can finish in time. Um, all right, I'm gonna go. really is the lightest part. edge right there. I want to hold on to. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm stopped talking. Let me know if you have any questions. I get to this part. Sometimes I have to think really hard. Yeah, and not feeling well. Well, that's all right. I'm okay with that. I'd be doing this anyway. Rain or shine or cold or whatever. I'd still be getting up to paint. This can go. Later there. <clears throat> I'm just got a little bit of my turquoise in there, but that's all right. I like that keeps it kind of cohesive if you get a little bit of other colors from other parts of the painting in it. I'm getting a little, little, a little, <clears throat> not putting down those brush strokes that I'm wanting to do. And I need a little bit of this shine through in here. Okay, um, so I might have to go a little bit smaller of a brush to do my little details. Well, I, well yeah, let's start with a little bit smaller of a brush. <clears throat> now I need just to add in Um. 
do my... Yep, this was a good challenge for me. This was not an easy one for me to do here. Okay, I'm going to go... And this comes down to here. paint on my brush to do this. <clears throat> and lighten it a little, a little bit in here. Oops, I didn't do that little, I'll just add that. And this is dark. I don't know. What do you guys think? Am I missing anything? A little white showing there. I don't want that. Am I noticing any reflections? Am I missing? Yeah, that little last stroke that did help to break up that space, but I did forget to <clears throat> make that little ang angle in there. Um. Maybe, I think these two look good. This might be forward a little too much. Maybe I should just add a little. A um, little more dark here. I'd like to push that one, whoops, back in a little more. Does it go back a little bit? Um, all right, I think that helped a little bit, didn't it? It's like a tension spot between these two. All right, did that put, yeah, that pushed that back a little bit more. I think that helped. Um, does my background look okay? I think it's good. I'm going to sign it. <clears throat> and this beautiful, I love this color in the background. I'm going to keep my signature small so it doesn't get too. <clears throat> so there's my. There's my palette, and with just a couple, oh, I have too much sun coming in here, <laughs> a couple minutes to spare. Um, so thanks for coming and hanging out with me today. It was fun. I will um, say this, and if you want to watch it again or try painting it yourself, I'll put it, I don't know how to get out of the sun. It's crazy. Good problem to have, right? Um, it'll be on on my website and definitely up on my YouTube channel. There's a bunch of these up there if anybody wants to watch. Thank you, Ellen. Yep, I will feel better soon, hopefully by tomorrow. Thanks for coming and hanging out, guys. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.